When you enable DLSS 4.5, you will get less FPS than DLSS 4.0 on older RTX series. NVIDIA calls it transformational, and because of that transformation, your card can lose up to 24% performance. Plus, NVIDIA app still has the 15% game filters bug even in 2026, and 90% of you have wrong global settings costing performance. Here's the proper setup they don't show you. NVIDIA app version 11.5 stable, 11.6 beta, released at CES 2026 to cover quantity of new GPU releases, which was exactly zero. The good. Fast UI, DLSS override system, 4K 120fps recording, AV1 codec support. The bad. Game filters bug still persists. Up to 15% FPS loss in games like Black Myth Wukong, Baldur's Gate 3, Flight Simulator. Defaults off now, but verify it's disabled. The worse. DLSS 4.5 punishes loyal user with RTX 20 and 30 series. No FP8 tensor cores means 14 to 24% performance loss versus DLSS 4.0. RTX 40 series, 2 to 3% loss. RTX 50 series, minimal impact. The worst. Default settings configured wrong and nobody explains the fixes. DLSS 4.5. Second generation transformer model. Five times more compute power. Sharper anti-aliasing. Dramatically reduced ghosting. Better temporal stability. Sounds amazing until you own RTX 20 or 30 series or chose wrong preset. Three presets. K, M, and L. NVIDIA barely explained them. Preset K is old DLSS 4.0. They didn't say that clearly. Preset M is for quality, balanced performance modes. Over sharpened according to some Reddit opinions. Causes shimmering on metal surfaces and reflective objects. Preset L is performance at 4K only. Here's what NVIDIA won't tell you. RTX 20 and 30 series lack FP8 tensor core support. DLSS 4.5 needs those for acceleration. Without them, massive performance penalty. For example, RTX 380 Ti loses 14 to 24% FPS depending on settings. This is NVIDIA punishing older hardware owners with new features that hurt performance. The fix. Open NVIDIA app. Graphics tab. DLSS override. Custom. Select model K instead of latest. This forces DLSS 4.0 which is significantly faster. RTX 2030, use Model K or lose 20% performance. RTX 4050, use latest, which is preset M. Multi-frame generation, 50 series gets up to 4X modes, 6X dynamic MFG coming spring 2026. RTX 40 gets single frame only, 2030 series gets nothing. Frame generation adds latency. Cyberpunk even on RTX 5090, baseline latency, plus seven milliseconds with 2X MFG, another 10 with 3X, and even more with 4X. Good for slow single player games, bad for competitive shooters where milliseconds matter. Use Reflex instead. Global settings nobody configures correctly. Settings, system, power management, optimal globally, not maximum performance. Maximum performance increases idle temps and power draw with zero gaming benefit. Community testing confirmed multiple times. Only per game if a title throttles incorrectly. Low latency mode, on, not ultra. On forces single frame queuing, reducing latency safely. Ultra only works at 99% GPU utilization and only affects DirectX 9 and 11. DX12 and Vulkan control their own queuing. Ultra causes is stuttering when conditions aren't met. Leave it on. Vertical sync. On. Yes. On. Sounds backwards, but here's why. Combined with G-Sync and frame cap, V-Sync on keeps you in VRR range without engaging V-Sync's latency penalty. No tearing, no latency hit. Perfect combination. Competitive players wanting absolute minimum latency. V-Sync off, no cap, except tearing. Max frame rate. Three below refresh rate. 140 for 144 hertz. 237 for 240 hertz, and so on. Keeps you in G-Sync range and prevents V-Sync from engaging its penalty. Set up G-Sync. Enable G-Sync compatible. Critical step many miss. Many monitors require enabling VRR in their OSD menu first. Go into monitor settings and enable variable refresh rate or adaptive sync or G-Sync or whatever your manufacturer calls it. Brands use different names for the same feature. Then enable G-Sync indicator in NVIDIA control panel to verify it's working. Green overlay and corner when G-Sync active. With modern OLEDs eliminating ghosting, G-Sync compatible has become the practical standard. Reflex. On plus boost for competitive games needing low latency. Operates at game engine level. Over 150 games supported as of mid-2025, and even more now. Counter-Strike 2 reaches 4 milliseconds PC latency on my rig. Marvel Rivals sees 55% latency reduction by some Reddit reports. On plus boost prevents GPU clocks from dropping when CPU bound, maintaining maximum responsiveness. Remember Reflex 2 with Frame Warp, which is RTX 50 exclusive, still unavailable. The finals drops from 56 milliseconds to 14 milliseconds, 75% reduction. Valorant at 800 frames per second reaches under 3 milliseconds total latency. Frame Warp updates rendered frames with latest mouse input just before display output, effectively warping camera position at the final moment. Revolutionary for competitive gaming, at least should be. Overlay. Game filters and photo mode. Off. This is the 15% FPS killer plaguing NVIDIA apps since launch. Even when not using filters, having this enabled causes significant performance loss. Tom's Hardware confirmed testing. Black Myth Wukong, Baldur's Gate 3, Flight Simulator, all were heavily affected, and some games still broken for some reason. Defaults off in version 11.0.1 and later, but verify it's disabled on your system because 
because some installs had issues. If you play Unreal Engine 5 games regularly, disable in-game overlay entirely. Turn the whole overlay off. Overlay, HUD, status indicators, none. These add overhead when not actively displayed. Auto GPU tuning? Skip this entirely. 5% gain versus manual around 12% with MSI Afterburner on my rig. Testing showed Afterburner achieving 400 megahertz core and 2000 megahertz memory versus Nvidia's 100 and 200, translating to 12% improvement manually versus negligible 5% from auto tuning. Only use if you want safe starting point without learning manual overclocking. Bloatware removal? Telemetry is a nightmare with Nvidia apps. Software collects hardware configuration, OS details, complete installed games list, every settings choice, and performance data from gaming sessions. No built-in disable option anywhere in app interface. To minimize telemetry collection, check my clean install driver guide. Important, these may automatically re-enable after driver updates, so check periodically and disable again. Yes, you heard that right. Nvidia's September 2025 privacy policy allows opting out through Privacy Center website, but most users don't know it exists. For users seriously concerned about bloat and privacy invasion, driver-only installation is legitimate option. This method skips approximately 90% of additional components while maintaining core GPU functionality perfectly. You lose shadow play recording, overlay features, optimization suggestions, but gain significantly cleaner system with zero telemetry collection. Verdict by GPU tier. RTX 20 and 30 series Giga Chads. Go to DLSS override and select Model K to completely avoid the 20% performance penalty NVIDIA created. Disable game filters and photo mode immediately. Set power management to auto globally. Enable low latency mode on, not ultra. Enable VSync on with frame cap 3 below refresh rate. Strongly consider driver only installation if you don't actively use overlay features for recording or streaming. You're being actively punished by NVIDIA's transformational DLSS 4.5 update costing up to 24% performance for zero visual benefit on your hardware. RTX 40 series owners? Use DLSS latest which defaults to preset M. Enable single frame frame generation for single player immersive games where latency doesn't matter. Use reflex on plus boost for competitive titles where every millisecond counts. Disable game filters completely. Set up G-Sync properly with V-Sync on and frame cap 3 below refresh. Full NVIDIA app features work well on RTX 40 architecture. You get DLSS 4.5 benefits with only minimal 2 to 3% performance hit, which is acceptable trade-off. RTX 50 series owners. Full DLSS 4.5 at optimal performance with FP4 tensor cores. Multi-frame generation 2x to 4x for massive frame rate boosts in single player titles. Reflex 2 with frame warp. If it's available when you watch it for competitive gaming, achieving under 3 milliseconds total system latency. All app features completely unlocked. This is the hardware tier Nvidia actually optimized their software for, and it shows clearly in performance results. Here's part Nvidia won't admit. They actively punish loyal RTX 20 and 30 series owners who bought hardware expecting reasonable long-term driver support. They market DLSS 4.5 as transformational breakthrough technology, but it costs up to 24% performance if your GPU lacks specific FP8 tensor cores they introduced in newer generations. They bundle invasive telemetry collection with no easy opt-out button and collect private data without clear disclosure to average users. Their auto-tuning feature wastes 10 to 20 minutes for pathetic 5% gains when manual overclocking achieves 12% with 5 minutes of learning. Game filters performance bug persisted over an entire year, costing 15% performance even when feature disabled by default. Their default global settings configured completely wrong. Maximum performance, wasting electricity and generating heat, no frame cap causing V-Sync latency to engage unnecessarily, zero guidance on proper G-Sync configuration for tear-free low-latency gaming. Subscribe for more deep dives. I'll see you in the next one.